know they're flooding the United States and Europe with the cheap labor as a political checkmate and to basically get a new dependent class in here because they realize politically people are waking up. There's a new Gallup poll out. Two-thirds of Hispanics don't want more immigrants and don't want to expand immigration. So that whole narrative that Hispanics all want open borders, it's racist. If you don't, we've always known that's bull, but it's coming out. And just the instincts for national survival, I think, will trump, pun intended, a lot of their actions. But uh, what curveballs do you see them throwing? What are you most concerned with? The class warfare, the the attack on the family, the injection of trannies everywhere, uh, men's barbershops getting fined for not having women. I mean, it's becoming so crazy, I can't even believe it. You're right, and it's, and it's more than the cheap labor thing. Ultimately, I think, for instance, let's, let's narrow it down to this invasion. Why would this be a good thing for people who want bigger, more powerful government, less individual sovereignty? Because you want to have people who are not even capable of self-government themselves, okay? You know, that, that's, that's what the founders had in mind for this country, was the idea that, you know, we basically govern ourselves and, and, and government would be strictly limited in its powers. And, of course, we've drifted so far from that over, over such a long period of time. But now it's on hyperdrive. And I think, ultimately, it's much more than the cheap labor thing. Sure, you, government can sell that to, to big, big businesses. You know, you want cheap labor? This is good for you. Go along with the Chamber of Commerce. But I don't think this starts with the business sector. I think it starts with government, which is interested in always expanding its power at the expense of individual liberty. And, and what better way than to have a bunch of sheep uh, coming into your country, people who are just happy to get any work that they can uh, and uh, who are not really interested or probably capable of functioning as a self-governing people under the parameters of our Constitution. That's, that's what I think it's all about. Ultimately. I agree with you. Uh, in closing, I want to get you back in the next few months to get into those documents you got. You said some of it was so incendiary, you had to carefully dole it out. When are we going to learn more about <laughs> what you got from the Clinton Library? I mean, what you released was bombshell. Yeah, well, it's there's a lot of good stuff in there. But, you know, when I look at it, I think this means something to me because I experienced it. You know, how much can I put out there without people thinking I'm just being self-indulgent and just being the But it doesn't matter. This is how they plan to shut down new media and how they, I mean, it's it's really powerful. Absolutely. They, they, they thought of shutting down new media even before we got started, Alex. That's, they saw, I have to hand it to them. They saw what a threat, uh, you know, we were at such an early stage in the development of new media. And so now, you know, <laughs> now with guys like you and, and Breitbart and Drudge and the rest, um, they really got their hands full, and they'll be more serious than ever. But look, we've experienced it all with Obama already. Let's face it. I mean, I, I don't think the Clintons have any uh, tricks that Obama doesn't have. Uh, he has done things that I don't think Hillary could have got, gotten away with, Bill could have gotten away with. Uh, he has subverted the Constitution beyond my wildest demand. You think he's going to try something to stay in office or sail off in the sunset? No, I think he wants to pick his successor. You know, for, he's also a genuinely lazy person. I don't think he even likes being president. There's all the trappings that come with it, all the vacations and perks he likes. But, you know, I mean, I think he said, his attitude is, I did my time. Now I'm, it's my turn to get rich. Look for Barack Obama to, you know, in a year or two, you'll see him sitting on a huge fortune. Ask yourselves how that happens. It happens every single time these guys leave office. <laughs> wow. It's a Joseph Farah, WND.com. Thank you so much for all you've done. We would be in even deeper trouble if it wasn't for you guys. Thank you, sir. Third hour. Thank you. Thank you. Third hour coming Thank up. Thank you for listening to GCN. Very important guest joining us, too. Pastor Chuck Baldwin's written some really powerful editorials as of late. In fact, I forgot to print off his last four or five. You guys do that. Thanks. Dealing with the death of religious freedom in this country, but it's beyond that. The new rite of passage... You know, for a Comanche young man, it'd be go out and steal horses, and then after that, it'd be go out and kill an enemy in battle, count coup. For a young American, it'd be join the Marine Corps. But for women now, the rite of passage out of four years of university is that men are the devil, all sex is rape, 
and that you've got to go out and you've got to re report them. you got to take a scalp. We had the guest on earlier, Associated Press reported it, barbershop fined $750. They were threatened with 10000 if they didn't pay that. And they sent a state investigator out and everything. The guy said, man, this is a men's barbershop. And of course, if he'd have let her in and she'd seen Playboys, she might have gone after that as being, you know, evil and, 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 and hurtful to her. And of course, under all free association rules, you should be able to have something for men or something for women. But I just illustrate how serious this is. You know, I mentioned this article. Feminists claim it's sexist to complain See, I think it's sexist for her to complain out of Freudian slip. Feminists claim it's sexist to compliment women. Feminazi, to use the Rush Limbaugh term, publicly shames man for complimenting her. And now in the London Telegraph today, lawyer who accused barrister of sexism, the same woman, has described men online as hot stuff. Ooh, a thought crime there. I mean, a, a mammal will be attracted to the opposite sex, that's not a crime. H having the name he or she or boy or girl, it's not bad to be he or she, see? I mean, this is how freakish this is getting. A lawyer who accused a fellow barrister of sexism in England after he described LinkedIn profile as stunning had previously praised men for their physical appearance online telling them they are hot stuff. Yeah, she just chose to do this and the feminist group said, good, name him and shame him to get her stars and bars. Charlotte Proudman, 27, said she felt objectified. Oh, oh, that's why you had your hair all done up and stuff on there. After receiving an online message from Alexander Carter, 57, she had invited to connect on the professional networking site. So she invited him to connect. He said, wow, I love your photo, it's stunning. How dare him? I mean. I'll be sitting there, and there's an old lady checking me out at, a, at Dillard's or something, buying a shirt, and if she's got a cool watch or something, I don't say it if I don't like it. I'll go, that's a really nice watch, or your hair really looks nice. I mean, that's just something my mom dad does, my dad does. Uh, I see a guy get, you know, uh, on an elevator with me with a cool sports jacket or a cool Rolex or cool uh, bag. I'll say, man, that's really cool. I'm just being nice, plus I like it. This is sick, telling us that our very communication's bad, putting us in smaller and smaller boxes. But it's all selectively enforced. If you want to have liberal Hollywood, sexism, sex stuff, debauchery, torture, murder, that's okay. You can have kids play violent video games all day, but if they go to school and write an essay about the Marines and mention an M16, here come the police. He wrote, I appreciate this, that this is probably... Horrendously politically incorrect, but that is a stunning picture. Oh, he even admitted it was politically incorrect. He even prostrated himself before her that I'm so sorry it's politically correct, uh, incorrect. And that signaled her like a bug-eyed piranha to come in and go after him. Because, see, they peck members of the cult even more. I mean... <laughs> You know, what I found is these women that are fake feminists, I've talked to a lot of guys about this, like Democratic Party operative women and stuff, actually want to be debased and want to be called pigs and stuff. Uh, and so the problem was he groveled to her. I'm not saying with her, but that's what I would imagine. Peter said, hey, you hussy, it's time for us to get together right now. He'd been partying that night, probably. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. It's InfoWars Live, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. The unapologetically pro-liberty, pro-human, pro-life, pro-freedom operation crashing and smashing through the lies and disinformation. Thank you for joining us. Well, Pastor Chuck Baldwin's been the Constitution Party national candidate. He's been an outspoken critic of tyranny, uh, filmmaker, author, you name it. And his son's a constitutional lawyer. They've co-written books together on so many subjects that are near and dear. But... I was out at dinner with people I would call quasi-liberals a few nights ago, and I thought of Chuck Baldwin, and I had a caller bring him up yesterday about some of the latest articles he's been writing at ChuckBaldwinLive.com about the fall of Christianity, the fall of the First Amendment that we're seeing. And these folks were saying to me, you know, you're a conservative, we're liberals, but we agree with some of your ideas and the things you said. And I said, listen, 
Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. George Washington was a conservative. These terms mean nothing. I'm a constitutionalist. But they were saying, we agree with you. Marriage is no point in being married now. It's been bastardized. And I said, listen, it wasn't bastardized with homosexual marriage. It was bastardized when the state got involved in 1901 in New York City with marriage licenses to the race hygiene boards. They're like, oh, well, let's move on. Other I said, no. Don't you want to know where this really came from? Francis Galton, eugenics, funded by the Crown, 1854, becomes national policy by the 1880s. London sets up the first health boards. They start sterilizing people with low test scores and the mentally retarded and others. You can argue there was a reason for it, but it moved on to everybody. Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood, the Nazis, all of it. You shouldn't have a marriage license to begin with. The church is, the, and they owned it. That's where the institution came from. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or freedom of the press or the people's right to peaceably assemble for redress of grievances. They're like, oh, I guess the First Amendment does get into religion. Yeah, Congress doesn't have a jurisdiction. So we don't have a state-run religion. We don't have government in religion. We have individual freedom. That's true freedom for you to not believe in God or to believe in God. But marriage is a contract between a man and a woman. And then if they choose to go do that through their religious group, they can have it certified. And then by the 50s, we get 501c3. And I'm not judging your church if they are, but you're not a church. You are a governmental body. You are issued license as a charity. And now, look, they haven't issued but one in six years to any conservative group. The 501c3, four, and the rest of it. The power to control something is the power to end it. So now we've got the jurisdiction over language. Don't say boy or girl. Don't say he or she. And they're doing it. It was hundreds of public schools a month ago. Now it's thousands. And people are going to the principal for in their forms they fill out saying he or she. This is a cult. They mean business. They're not liberals. They had to take over the liberal renaissance movement and the Christian movements of egalitarianism that were expanding 500 years ago, beginning 500 years ago, and in their greatest flower by 1776. They then had a counterfeit of it that is modern liberalism that was the French Revolution, Jacobinism, and the Illuminati, which were all of that. George Washington wrote about this. This was like major newspapers at the time. You could just search newspaper articles about Illuminati, 1789, or George Washington letters on the Illuminati, Library of Congress. You'll, you can read it all in his handwriting. So I talk about this. This isn't some national treasure fiction, folks. This is the reality. And the Jacobins, the Illuminati, wanted to end the family. They wanted to end language and turn the general public into slaves that lived in pits with the high priest above them controlling them with a nine-day-a-week work week, new holidays. They wanted to invert everything, play God. And that's what you're seeing now is being stomped on, being trampled, being dominated, anything wholesome under attack. That's my rant. And, and Pastor Chuck Baldwin talks about this all day. It's Christianity that ended slavery, real Christians. It's Christianity that gave us the free market. It's Christianity that gave us due process. It's Christianity. They say get rid of what's old. They're bringing in the old barbarism of the occult and of a dumbed-down public controlled by the high priest who tells you give him your kids to sacrifice or your daughters to have sex with or the snake god won't vomit out the moon at the next eclipse. The age of reason begins with Christians, not the phony churches that are government, state-run churches like China or Russia under Stalin. Now, that's my rant. Chuck Baldwin joins us. He has written the book that we sell, Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission, uh, but I've heard Christians call into conservative radio and say we should submit and issue these marriage licenses and all the rest of it. This is a conquering, folks. This is a takeover. This is a domination. Because standing in the way of world government and a microchip population and a cashless society 
is the true Christians. That's why the Pope will travel the first time to Cuba to be worshipped by the communist dictator and his brother Raul.